friends, welcome to Science With Me. My name is Dr. Erica. I am so excited that you are joining us for these Tinkercad circuit tutorial videos. We recently made a 555 timer police light, which was really cool. It switched red and blue. If you haven't checked it out, I encourage you to do so. But we need to add some music to that police light action. So we are gonna make a police siren today using not the 555 timer, but it's twin sister, or not quite it's twin, it's older sibling, I guess, the 556 timer, which is really two 555 timers in one. So let's get started. First thing we're gonna name this our police siren. And we will, as always, need to bring out a breadboard. A little one, it will be just fine. We need some power to power up that breadboard. And let's attach that power. So I'm gonna have my red one. It's coming right down here. And let's change that color to red. And my ground or my negative lead. Oh, let's see if we can get it. We'll come out and we'll go right here into the negative rail. If you're new to breadboards, please check out our other circuit projects for breadboards that we can all be on the same page. All right, I'm going to connect these guys all down the line. I'm gonna change this to red though, otherwise we might get confused between what is what we call hot or high in voltage and what is low, negative or ground in voltage. Um, and we're gonna color these ones black. And this just gives me power and everything and ground to all of these rails, which are attached all the way across, and actually along these two side pieces as well, if that helps us with our circuit. We don't always need to do this, but it's just sort of good practice to get that started. All right, so we talked about our new chip. It's gonna be the 556 timer, which is a dual timer. It's two circuits in one for us. All right, so when you look around on this, you'll notice it has like sort of discharge A, threshold A, control A, reset A, output A, and a trigger. And if we look at the 555 timer, it's gonna have all of those things, except for it also has ground and power, and then we have the trigger, the output, of course, it'd be trigger A, output A, reset A, control voltage, threshold, and discharge. So all of that is gonna be here, but you also have the Bs for the second 555 chip that's in there. And those two chips share a power and they share a ground, which is over here. So let's start by powering up our chip. So let's add power here on the last pin, which is pin 14, and it says power if you hover over it. Pin seven is our ground pin, so we can plug that straight into ground. All right, and so now we're gonna check out our threshold and our trigger pins for both of them, and we're gonna connect them. And this happens a lot in the timer circuits, and that's because the trigger is sort of your starting gun, and that happens when the voltage is sort of lower than a third of nine volts, so when it's lower than three volts. And the trigger is sort of the stopping, and that happens at six volts here. So this gives me an on and off, and by connecting them, I sort of have this nice space that I can live in between. So we're gonna connect the trigger and the threshold for both sets. For, so for both A and B, we're gonna connect those guys right there. All right, so now is where the fun begins. So let's get some voltage into our threshold A, and we're gonna do that through a couple of resistors. So I'm gonna pull out a resistor. I'm gonna make it 68 kilo ohms. So if you're following along, make sure you type in 68 kilo ohms. And I'm going to rotate this to the side. I'll connect one side into my threshold A. And then the other side is gonna go through another resistor. So let's rotate this one. And we can leave this one at the stock one kilo ohm. That's gonna go right here. And then I'm gonna put a capacitor in here after that second resistor. So I'm gonna put, let's see, let's put it right here up here so we can see it a little better. And this capacitor, one side is gonna go to hot. So right here, that'll go straight to the hot and I'll color that red. And the other side, is actually gonna go back into our circuit and that's gonna go into controlling our stuff. So that's gonna go into control A. I think I'm gonna click on this 
resistor, I'm going to move it up here so that I can get to control A with a nice clean line. Just like that. I'm going to color that line gray. There we go. So I've got now I've got my threshold of A. If you watch, it sort of comes out here, goes through some resistors into here. And then also it goes in through this capacitor, which can charge and discharge. And that's going to go into my control for A. Now I'm going to add another capacitor, and this one's going to go to trigger A so that I can sort of vary my starting gun on this. So I'm going to grab a polarized capacitor. I'm going to flip it all the way around like that. And this one, I want to check the size. I'm going to make it one microfarad at 16 volts so it comes up beautifully the way I want it. This is going to connect into my threshold on the positive side. So here's the positive. The negative always has this strip. That's true also if you're building circuits. You'll see sort of this gray strip and usually it has a whole bunch of like little negatives on it. I'm going to connect one leg into my trigger A. And this leg is going to go straight into ground. So I'm going to color these black because I'm going to go over into ground. Just like that. All right. And I could have actually, I guess, just come straight over here because this pin is also ground. So if you wanted to shortcut that a little bit, you could do that. All right, so that's a lot of what we need for this part, except for we need to connect our two 555 timers. And we're going to connect our output of A into the control of B. So here is the output of A. And we're going to connect the output of A, and we're going to have that be our control for B. So we're going to connect these two guys, and we're just going to do that through a simple resistor. That'll be 10 kilo ohms. So let's pull out a resistor, and we'll change that from 1 kilo ohm to 10 kilo ohms. And I'm going to put that so it just spans the gap right like that. And I want to connect output A right here. So I think I'm going to move this capacitor down just so I can see my circuit pieces a little better. So here is my, oops, that's the trigger. There's the output A. I'm going to connect it right here into that resistor. Let's color that pink. And I'm going to go from the resistor into my control of B. So that is right there is how I connect my two 555 timers together. All right. So now we're going to work on our discharge of B. And this helps sort of discharge. It usually discharges this through a capacitor, so it helps regulate our timing. And for this, I'm going to need a couple of resistors. And I'm going to use a different resistance than the 1 kilo ohm. I'm actually going to use 10 kilo ohms for these. And what we can do, let's see if we can fit it. If we rotate this resistor to the side, here is my discharge of B. I can just put this here straight into the discharge of B. And so we're going to go from there into a capacitor. And just a regular capacitor will work right here. So just like that little guy right there. And that capacitance is going to be 100 nanofarads, so you don't need to worry about it. It should be stock, but I've got 100 nanofarads here. And the other side of this capacitor is going to go to ground. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to connect this to ground, the black wire. And I'll just move this back up again so that we have a little bit more space to see things. And then the other leg of this, we are also actually going to connect into our trigger for B. So it's going to also help us trigger this clock starting. Because remember, the trigger is sort of like our shotgun, our starting gun. So this is going to go into our trigger. Let's double check there's the trigger. And we can click it like that. Let's make that brown, maybe. All sorts of different color wires. It's the beauty of sort of using these Tinkercad circuits. You can have all these gorgeous wire colors, and it's not hard to do. And to help regulate this, we're going to put it through another resistor that's also 10 kilo ohms, so not the one that it comes out with. You'll have to change that to the 10 kilo ohms. And this resistor is going to keep going from the resistor that came out of our discharge B, and this is going to go straight to hot. So you'll notice that our discharge is sort of regulated through this capacitor and it can charge and discharge because you got something going to ground and you also have something coming from those nine volts. And then depending on the state of this capacitor is how we are going to trigger that second timer that we have.
So now it's time to make some noise. So let's get our piezo buzzer out. And piezo buzzers, they are polar, so they have a positive and a negative. So we do need to make sure that we take care of that and make sure we don't flip it around. It's just like an LED, it's a one-way street. It won't work otherwise. I'm gonna connect a this last line to negative right here. So I can plug this guy in like that and it will be connected to my ground over here. All right, the other way if we wanted to that we could do it is we could also connect this to negative if you prefer to be able to see it. All right, now my positive is gonna be regulated by my output from B, but I need to put it through a capacitor before I plug it into B. So I'm gonna put a capacitor in here and I'm gonna use the polarized capacitors so just like this other one down here, this does have a negative and a positive. I'm gonna flip it over. So I'm gonna click on this little guy that will rotate it a few times. And this is gonna go into here. And I'm noticing though that by doing that, I'm sort of gonna be running into the issues of connecting things. So if I plug it in here, I'm actually connecting this into my control for B, and I don't wanna do that. So what I'll do instead is I'm gonna put this capacitor down here like that and what I can do is I can connect this part to the negative part of the capacitor and let's just make this let's see we haven't used green yet and then I'm going to connect this into my output for B so now I need my output for B and I can plug this here maybe and where is my output for B oops if you, hit, if you accidentally make a wire, you can hit escape. There's my B's output, so I can bring this down right into that. So this is a little, getting a little tight here, but we have our output from B, which goes right into here, into this capacitor, and then into my piezo buzzer. All right, this capacitor is gonna wanna be 10 microfarads. So let's add a, a zero there different from this capacitor, which is just one microfarad. All right, and we should be able to hit go and see what happens. Ooh. All right, so it sounds like we have a little bit of debugging to do. And that always happens in the circuit, so it's great that you're seeing it happen right now. And I think I see it. I added these guys in series, and I actually want this one coming out of discharge B and going into high. So let's pull that resistor out. We'll click on this and delete that. I think if we flip this and put it right, oops, right into high, I think that is a little bit closer to what we were hoping for. So let's see if our circuit works now. Ooh, that is really loud. I'm going to make my stuff a little bit quieter. And you can see, through a really loud noise, we have that police or ambulance siren going on for us, which is great. I'm super glad that was a really easy fix right there to make that. Um, but that happens all the times in circuits. You are always making a circuit and then spending a whole bunch of time debugging it. Sort of like how you do in programming. Similar situation. All right. Thank you guys so much. Make sure that you check out all of our other circuit tutorials. We have lots of 555 timer circuit tutorials and we have some really cool new voltage comparators um, tutorials. If you are saying, what else is there in this world other than this 555 or 556 chip? And there's another one that's really cool that you can do. It's cheap and you don't have to program it. Thanks so much for watching guys. We will see you soon. Bye friends.